Well, just getting done now. It's 20, quarter after two. Quarter after two here. Um, track wasn't great today. I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. So uh, are we going to train? Tentatively, we are going to train, but depends what the track is like in the morning. A uh, big, big day this morning. Uh, I got to the barn. Who did I go with? I jogged somebody. I got to the barn. Oh, no, I warmed up at least Patrick. Got to the barn. We had 11 horses to go to Mohawk today. Now, considering we took 10 to Mohawk on Wednesday to train, and we went with 8 or 10 horses at Ohio yesterday, it just gives you an idea of how close a lot of these horses are getting. So an update of the schoolers and the qualifiers today. I made my way over to Mohawk this morning. Harry grabbed a hold of me and went in and said, can you go with Almost There, boss? James picked the other horse. Now, I hadn't seen Almost There, boss. Well, last time I went with I don't even know the last time I trained Almost There, boss. It was eons ago. And uh, Harry told me how impressed he was with him lately. Now, I had told you guys when we first brought him in, his ankle seemed a bit sore. Harry was had to put flip-flops on him up front to train him down. So I really didn't get a, a real grasp on how good he actually was right now. Wanted to follow, but, you know, not stretch him out. And if you watch the qualifier, I had a pretty good hold on him going under the wire. 26 and 3 on the end of it. Now, I know there was a tailwind, but, man, you know, he was... He had lots left in the tank. Mile and 57 and a piece. That was a well in hand, powerful. Well, I'll tell you what. His mile was good enough today where I may want to go home and at some point examine where we have him staked. You know, pacers are so hard. You know, he's seven seconds for being a top Ohio, a top Ontario pacing colt. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots more that can fly. That was an impressive mile today, a big mile from almost there, boss. Now, I want to try to focus because we had five qualifiers, six schoolers. Uh, next two horses out of the barn were in together, LDs, Patrick, and Simba. Simba's so smart, too. He's sitting in the tool, and I removed him, and it's almost like you could hear him. Yeah, I know what you're doing. Yeah, I know. You want to cover LDs, Patrick, up. All right, I'll, I'll help out. I'll take one for the team. I put him on the front end, and he just whacked out a good mile. We were trotting pretty good on the end of it. LDs, Patrick, wasn't super sharp great sound feeling good but as James said to a little while later it never dawned on him he was right when's the last time he went a flat fast mile made a break in Yonkers now I guess two minutes Mark Beckwith said he trained him in Saratoga so that would that would qualify but aside from that uh, a wild break in his last start behind the gate in Saratoga and then he hit the gate uh, at Yonkers so that mile in two minutes between his last win here and today, that mile in two minutes was the only fast mile he's gone. So, uh, a great mile this morning. 27 and four on the end of it. Uh, mile 57 and three, I think. 57 and three. A good mile. Stonebridge Simba was good. I don't really know if Simba was ready to go there, but he's an old horse. You know, it feels like we've had him for 35 years. He just. He was good today, but he knew the score today. Like, uh, Patrick got up alongside him halfway down the lane, and I kind of wowed him up and just kind of brushed him on the tail. And uh, I think he knew what the score was. I wanted to brave Patrick up. I wanted him to feel sharp going into Ohio. And as Simba's been through so much, you know, nothing phases him, nothing. It's just a walk in the park for him. He's a, a real treat to drive, and he was very, very good this morning. LD's Patrick was very good this morning also. If there was only one dig, James said he was kind of quiet, which usually he's hot and bothered. But a lot went on in LD's Patrick's life in the last month, right? Went from winning at Mohawk to being shipped down to New York, shipping around an awful lot, uh, making breaks. Really, he needed today to get tight for a good mile, to get a confidence booster. That qualifier this morning was a big deal for him because I don't think we are going to get to race him. Uh, now, if they're going to have a race for him next Friday, okay, maybe. But it has to be the right class, which I don't even know where he would fit. And again, it's five days before Miami Valley. I don't know if I'm a real big fan of that idea. I'm more liable to say we can school him next Friday. He's going to Miami Valley. So is stay close after this start coming up at Mohawk. So is... Walk on the moon. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, what happened to Walk on the Moon? He just didn't get around the half. He didn't get around the half good yesterday. I mean, he makes a break at the meadows. Okay, then I want to investigate what's going on. His feet look like they were a little warm after he qualified, so we can work on his feet. But he didn't look sore to me. He didn't hang on the line. He didn't do anything wrong other than the breaks he made in the turns. 
maybe he just isn't used to going on a half and he wasn't really particularly comfortable doing it yesterday. But the breaks from Walk on the Moon, I can assure you, were absolutely not attributed to soreness in any way, just mechanical um, in that regard. So take him in the Meadows Tuesday. So that's where J Jason's going to take him, drop him off at Tim's, qualify him, bring him back home. He's going to Miami Valley. Uh, also for that series, that's for Royson's Punch is paid into that series. Also, uh, four trotters. So I, I can I can see us if Royson's punch don't no, if Royce sit up, bud. Did you see that one? That's not how you sit down. Royson's punch, um, if he's and he's not as good as those three, so it looks like maybe it's a stretch to take him. Then we'll see Monday though. As I said to Steve yesterday as we were talking about this, he goes, Well, do we really need to take four? I mean, is Royson's punch a necessity? He can't beat those other three horses. Hold on. Royston's punch got a mark of 54. They took him to Philadelphia. He qualified in 59 at the Meadowlands. And since that qualifier, he said, what, two trips faster than 59 or two minutes? Two? Might not be tight. Sound the other day. I like what I saw. Now, unfortunately for him, he wants no part of a glare AM. In fact, I don't think anybody in that class does. And as conservative as James drives her, she still should rise above, I would think. But it's always a horse race. You never know. Uh, so a glare AM is in to go Monday with Royston's Punch. So Royston's Punch is paid into that series. We'll see what we do and where we go with them. Um, for now, that's who's going to the series. And then obviously, no free lunch on the pacing side. So hold on, we get off track here. Almost there, boss, was, seemed bionic to me and was very, very good. Stonebridge Simba, very good uh, in his qualifier. Uh, Eldis Patrick, very good in his qualifier. So now we jump ahead to the next qualifier. Um, I'll talk about the scratch of peanut butter and jelly in a minute. It's important. I, I, I addressed it briefly in the thread um, in the thread of the stable today, but I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. It's not a big deal. Um, the fourth qualifier at the North Century, Invictus, 27-3 and three on the end. James said he was good. He's going to need another qualifier, maybe a schooler. But you can see he had lots of pop on the end of it. No slouches, though. You know, Dougie, whoever Dougie had in there was was really strong also. And then the only horse that kind of kind of got a, a crappy trip today was Don't Believe Me, Just Watch. Like, had to get in where they went in 53. Really? That's a tough trip for a little bugger. Anyway, as Harry put it, he won his race because there was one, two, three, and then a way back to the rest of the field. And uh, Don't Believe Me, Just Watch beat them. So, um, you know, uh, 57 qualifiers, a good qualifier for him. I guess he was ready to go there. A little unfair to pitch him in with that bunch, though, but where are you going to go? you got to qualify him, so that's what it was. He qualified well, so those were the five qualifiers. Now, Peanut Butter and Jelly was supposed to go in the first qualifier, and I told Mario, I said, Mario, she scored in 2-5 last week. And she's not ready to go out. We're going to put a bad line on her. She's not ready to go out there and go in 59, 2 minutes, 2-1. And he said, yeah, you know, I just hate putting her in a schooler because you either go super fast or slow. He, there's a valid argument there to not put her in a schooler, but I just felt that I didn't want to put bad lines on her. And you guys know why, all right? We're starting to see the horses look good. And for the, you know, Peanut Butter and Jelly, um, even the other filly that won at Flamborough, those horses got to show more, right? They're not stake horses, then they're not going to be staying for the entirety of the summer. We're going to race them up through the numbers. One, and there's lots of people that don't want to hear that. Right, that don't want to hear that, but that's the reality of it. Like, you can make an argument that peanut butter and jelly needs a couple of schoolers to qualify. No problem. Boss didn't. And uh, Boss is a nice horse. Century Invictus didn't look anywhere near as good as Boss, but I didn't think anybody thought he was a better horse, and maybe today I can make an argument for it. But Invictus has been a good horse, just needs some tightness. He's a better, uh, better delight. So is peanut butter and jelly. Maybe she just needs a little more work. We can get her work. But I didn't want to put a bad line on the filly. Her first start behind the gate of three -year -old, her three-year-old year. Let's go out and school her in 2-1 and then come back with a 59 two-minute qualifier. That's exactly what we did today. So Mario went out and he said, yeah, you're right. It's no problem. So um, I understood where he was going. You know, sometimes those schoolers go over half and two, go a mile and 2-1, which may or may not be good for her. And the Pacers might have some racehorses in there and they go in 54, which also is not good for her. So I can see the argument there. But I just felt we needed to have a good official line on peanut butter and jelly. We'll do that next Friday. She schooled today in 2-1. Mario thought she was good. I went with Massive Profit. It was very good. It's six schoolers, by the way. 
Um, massive profit was very good today. Two pacers beat me down the lane, but I wanted him in the pace one. I want him to do a little more work today. This is two qualifiers in the schooler now. 59 and three off a half and probably a minute and a piece, one, one. A good mile for him. I think he's just tall and lanky right now, and he's got to work into his speed. So I was very happy with um, with him also. Stonebridge Jacotti, Mario, he's back a little bit, went a mile in two, three, but he said he's good. He's ready to go to Flamborough, London, whatever. So we'll get Hakati in to go in London or Flamborough. I think he said Flamborough Sunday, next Sunday. Today's Friday, yeah, next Sunday. Somewhere around there. Um, so Stonebridge Jacotti is ready to go now. Better qualifier, or schooler. Second line, second trip with hobbles on as a sophomore. Uh, they still seem tight to me when he was beside me, but I haven't gone, to him, so I've gone with him, so I'm certainly not going to judge how they're supposed to be on. I have no idea. Uh, but he was happy with his mile in 2-3. Okay, so that's peanut butter and jelly went well. Um, uh, peanut butter and jelly went well. Massive profit went well. So did Stonebridge Chicotti. Brave World School today, two minutes. Uh, I didn't see him. He was behind me, but Harry said he was absolutely flying on the end of it. He's ready to qualify now. Um, so then James went with two. Will to win Hanover. Two minutes and two. So the last the last schooler was important. It was a big schooler. Resolute Bay, I went with. James went with Will to win Hanover. I told you guys, two schoolers, two qualifiers, and at least two races before we start talking very seriously about Will to win Hanover. Two minutes today, 2-1. James said she was very strong. He had to chase her down the lane, and I'll be honest, I came out of the five hole down the lane, and I could have blown right by Will to win Hanover with Resolute Bay, but I didn't want to piss, you know, piss her off and get her earmuffs. She got in from something. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't want to break her confidence, so I just kind of eased him up beside her going under the wire. Now, that's telling in two very major things. One, Wildewind Hanover's dropping speed. And here's the thing. We're talking about horse-by-horse -horse basis. Resolute Bay is a nice horse. You know, he's just a nice resolve, trotting colt in Ontario. Probably going to be a nice horse for us. We got major plans for Will to win Hanover, but they, these horses have to come along in different ways, right? Will to win Hanover is this giant tall filly now that is going to have to grind her way up into fifth gear. When we get her there, I think you're going to see a, a very, very nice horse. It could be wrong, but we'll see. Um, as I said, right now, if you're going to race Resolute Bay against Will to win Hanover, he's going to beat her. Give them three, four, five weeks, six weeks of fast racing miles, and we'll see. But Resolute Bay was exceptionally good today. I had I don't think I've gone with him in forever. And man, uh, he looked good training down with Jason. He looked very, very, very good today. Now, as we transition Jason back over to Ohio, Jason's in Ohio full time now. Um, Resolute Bay will make his way to Harry's Barn. I think over the next few weeks, we'll take some of the American breads that are training, getting ready, have them in Jason's Barn with Cindy. Uh, I keep an eye on them also. But Harry's going to probably hit Resolute Bay. He was so, so good today. I was happily surprised when I went with him. Uh, he's got some talent. That cool. He's supposed to, right? He's supposed to have talent. He's a, his brother's a world champion, you know, but um, his maturity has been evident to all of us. We got a chance to watch it all train down. He just, he looked really, really good. Really impressed with Resolute Bay. And Will DeWin Hanover, the mile and 2 1 today, was exactly where she needed to be. We'll come back with her with a qualifier next week. I suspect James wants to back her up to 2 2 2 3 next week and then probably look for a mile in 58 59 after that. But she's going to be for the next little while middle of the pack, trotting on the end of it. If there was ever a horse on planet Earth right now built for James McDonald, it is Will Dwayne Hanover. So that is where we're at. Uh, trained 8 or 9 or 10 yesterday in Ohio, qualified in school 11 today, qualified or schooled or trained. 10 at Mohawk on Wednesday. So as I said, there's 31 in the last 72 hours that have trained fast miles for us here at the stable.ca. Just give you a little idea of how many are getting ready right now to race. So with that, I will talk to you all soon. I guess another midweek video update, but there's going to be lots of those with all these horses getting ready. We, it's not midweek, it's Friday right now. So we have nothing racing tonight that I'm aware of. Not in Ontario anyway. Um, my eyes are fixed tomorrow. Patrick the Piranha A makes his Canadian debut. That's three countries he's been in since September.
He came from Australia in September. Uh, he raced here. He raced in the United States until we bought him last week, and he's racing here tomorrow. So James McDonald's going to drive him in the open. Bolt power. First start for us in Canada tomorrow also. Can't wait to see him race. And then Monday, stay close. He's racing also. Locatelli is racing. Kings County is racing. Captain Mike Dio. See if I can keep it going. Captain Mike Dio is racing. Royson's. No, Captain Mike Dio. Carter Michael Dio is the trotter. This is Captain Mike Dio, the pacer. And then a glare AM and Royson's punch. So a lot going on now, tomorrow, into Monday. I uh, hope you're all caught up. We hopefully, weather will, so this is what we're dealing with right now. Oh, there was no snow here yesterday, blowing snow here today. Not really cool. We'll see if we can get on and get out and train them all tomorrow. Now, uh, it's going to be exceedingly difficult also because it's a blacksmith's been here this week. I've been taking the cork off all the horses. So if it's really icy, those horses won't be training also. I'm going to say a fairly quiet day at Tomiko Training Center tomorrow, but we'll see. Who knows? We'll talk to you all tomorrow. We'll do your videos, get you all caught up for the weekend. Uh, a great day here in Ontario. Take care.